identifying a misfire cylinder on a V8. We've went over a four cylinder and a six and I've had a few requests to do a V8. So here it is, stay tuned. I get a lot of questions asked about how to ID a cylinder on a V8 that has a misfire. So I just wanna show you guys the screen. This truck doesn't have any problems, but I'm gonna use the scan tool and we're gonna kill, let's say number three. And hit start. And we just killed three. And you can see the lower pulse here. I've got a sink on number two. We're gonna go over this more and more, but uh, I just wanted to show you live what cylinder I'm killing. And uh, I'll save this file and we'll do one more. Hang on. A couple of items of business before we get down to business. Uh, one, I've started a Facebook page. I'm Carter's Diagnostics on Facebook. Some of you guys have already found me, said, hey, I appreciate that. Uh, I've got involved with a Pico group, um, a Nissan group, some other diagnostic type stuff, just kind of throwing my hat in the ring in the Facebook deal. Uh, so if you see me on there, give me a holler. Uh, number two, Auto Nerds. We are having our monthly Zoom style meeting. It's a two hour training session. It's on the 19th of October, 2023. It usually runs 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we get on there, have a good time, discuss a few things that's been on the forum, go over new stuff. Um, it's always something going on. Quick note, Trevor had posted something in the public group area on the Auto Nerds forum about the 4425A scopes and given some weird messages about power usage and some settings that you can change because the amp clamps and things are now powered by the computer and not necessarily a 9 volt battery. So I would advise anybody to check that out if you're not an auto nerds member click the link in my description box it'll take you there you can sign up for the forum at least have public access and you can read some pretty important stuff going on there um, i don't have a 4425a so i can't relate to to the, what the issue is but uh, he explained it pretty good in the post that he made um, this is a v8 2018 gas-powered 5.6 liter Nissan Titan. I've had a few requests to show what a misfire would look like on a V8 and how to identify what cylinder is missing. On my channel I've done several four cylinders, um, at least maybe one or two six cylinders, um, and now we're going to do a V8. When it comes to using a pulse sensor in the exhaust, I look at, I use it idling to help ID the missile, misfire. Um, if I'm looking for a valve problem, I usually don't use running captures. I personally like to use uh, cranking captures, but to each their own when it comes to this style of diagnostics. Uh, my advice is do what I've done here if you've got extra time, do it. Practice with it. Put it in the tailpipe. Use the scan tool. Kill the cylinders. And if you have an overlay, use it. If you don't have an overlay, I'm going to show you kind of how I go about IDing which cylinder. Um, and we'll go from there. Quick tip on using Pico 7 is I have all my information down here. So if I want to move it up here where we all can see it, you can just hold the notes tab and drag it. But I'll warn you, if you click anywhere else, it disappears again. So you kind of got to keep reviving it. So I'm just going to shrink it down and we're going to put it up here where we all can see it. Now it's probably going to disappear because I'm going to pull some uh, phase rulers out. So let's get started with the phase ruler. Let's turn them on. 
I'm going to lay off 720, which is going to be from Spark Event to Spark Event. And then we're just going to zoom in right here, drag everything over. Now, the first thing I like to do, in the, whether it's a V8, four cylinder, or a six cylinder, is these engines top dead center, meaning the piston on top dead center is not where the ignition is. If you take a quick glance at the scan tool, which I did on this one, this engine idling with this misfire was about 15 degrees before top dead center. And where this will come in handy is especially on a six cylinder and I suspect a three cylinder engine, which I haven't done yet, but we do have one now. And uh, I'll show you real quick on a six what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna pull the ruler over and I'm gonna come up about, let's just say 12, let's say at the end of the spark line. See, there's 12 degrees right there. And let's see what it would be over here. Um, we'll go, we're just gonna go to the end of the spark line. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to pull this over. And this will represent more of physical top dead center. What I found, and the reason I do this, is on V8s and four cylinders, the low pulse falls nice and neatly in the, in the space of the exhaust stroke. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I put the overlay up. A six cylinder tends to fall on the line because it fires every 120 degrees. And sometimes by moving that overlay over where the ignition separates itself from top dead center will help ID a six cylinder. And the more I talk about it, the more I think I'm gonna to have to show you guys. So we know a V8 fires every 90 degrees, so we need to bring out eight rulers. So if I don't have an overlay, this is number two. I'm synced on number two. Let's get our over. Let's get our numbers back up. So I'm going to pop over two spots. So one, two, and now this is number two's exhaust. And then we're just going to go by the firing order. So if this is two's exhaust, this is going to be one, eight, seven, three, and that's the cylinder I killed six, five, four, two. And then we just start over. So remember, go over one, go over two, and then this one's gonna be the exhaust of whatever sink you have. And then you just go through your firing order. Now let's pull up an overlay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line it up there and we're just going to stretch it out a little bit right there. And we can see right here, the low pulse falls right nice and neat, right in number three. Pretty cool. Uh, this is just the way I do it. Um, some guys have a different style. Some guys will come over to the middle and then back up a few, whatever works. Um, what I want you guys to do is if you have spare time, practice this stuff. This vehicle had no problems as far as misfiring. I induced the misfire. Now I'm getting a good feel, a good realistic feel of what a misfire would look like if this thing were sitting in my bay. Because Lord knows with Iridium plugs that I have experience with are not good nissan has coil problems high pressure fuel injectors you know they always have issues and then of course you got valve train stuff so it, it kind of would you be doing yourself a favor to really familiarize yourself with looking at um, data like this because i can tell you i don't always believe the scan tool the scan tool can be wrong you're taking up a crankshaft sensor you're inputting that into a box this box is processing information and spitting out trouble codes um, usually by the time I get a car 
for a misfire, it has had everything under the sun put on it. So the first place I start is to make sure we're chasing the correct cylinder. This is raw data. I'm not relying on any machine or any box to spit out a code to me. I'm relying on raw data deciding for myself what cylinder is misfiring. And that's why I do this sort of testing. So I do have another one prepared. So let's uh, exit out of this and um, we're going to do another cylinder. So uh, hang on. All right, same setup. Uh, this time I'm going to use the scan tool and I'm just going to kill number, let's kill number five. Monitor start, test start. You can hear the motor die down and there's our misfire. So I'm going to stop the scope here and we'll go over this one and um, check it out. Thanks for watching. So Ben's we're all experts on this. <clears throat> I'm going to roll through this one a little quicker. But I picked this cylinder on purpose because it is right next to the firing event and it kind of shows you the delay between firing and the, the bad cylinder. So um, let's just roll through this one real quick. I've killed number five, so let's turn our rulers back on. We'll go ahead and pop our eight back up. Let's uh, lay off our 720 again it's kind of small in here pull our hand back over and we've already checked our timing so I'm going to slide everything over and we're going to put our firing order back up here where we can see it a little easier I do stuff like this because I'm about OCD as hell so uh, I'm a creature of habit I feel like if I do things over and over and over again, then muscle memory will kick in and uh, hopefully I don't have to rely on my aging brain. So here we go. Here's our misfire. We already know it's number five, but it kind of shows you the, the relationship between a firing event and a misfire. You know, it, you got to think of all the other things that happen before that pulse goes through the head, down through the cats mid pipe and out that tailpipe where the sensor is so we're going to go over one two so two's exhaust one eight seven three six and then five which would be here and then uh four and two so there's five and if we look at it on our overlay Put him right there and somewhere around in there. And you can see there's number five. Let me stretch this out so we can see it. There's number five right there. And you can see that that thing tucks in nice and neat. Right in number five. Um, pretty simple stuff. But it's not so simple if you've never done it and you're trying to learn on a bad car that's when it becomes complicated um, there again I can't preach enough practice on known good cars start with a four-cylinder to me four cylinders are the easiest for you guys out there in the world that have five cylinder engines I don't have anything to show you I have no five cylinder engines in my world I have four six eight and now three uh, I haven't done a three and I haven't done a 10. So you 10 cylinder guys, good luck. You five cylinder guys, good luck. But get yourself an overlay. The principles have got to be the same. That is what I know. So I'm gonna end this right now and then I'm gonna show you a quick six cylinder deal. Um, I do have a video on a six, but I feel like I wanna show it one more time in this video because I have talked about it. But just remember, see how nice and neat this falls right in number five. So keep that in the back of your mind while I pull up a six cylinder and then you'll see where it falls on the line. And then uh, we'll go over, you got to think more of where the exhaust valve opens when you're looking at a six. So that's the teaser. 
let me uh, let me get that six cylinder pulled up. Hold on. So here's our six cylinder. Um, I got a sink on number four, and the misfire is on number six. So if I hop over one, this is how I do six cylinders, and then this is four, five, six. One, two, three, four. All right, I know the misfire is on number six on this, but C is C where it's right on the line. So this is where I think moving the timing over will help you. Is it this one or is it this one? Number six's exhaust valve opens here, and the exhaust valve opening on a cylinder that doesn't fire is what gives us our big pullback. Um, so that's why I said think of the exhaust valve opening but before I move this let's look at the let's look at the ID chart so if I line the ID chart right now this is the ignition command it fires on the falling edge so if I line that up right there right on the falling edge see where it see where that is it is this five or is this six? Well, if you think about the power stroke, the exhaust valve on any motor opens before bottom dead center. So it opens actually on the power stroke. So if our exhaust valve opens here, it would be pulling down on number six. But also, let's check this out. Let's move this out of the way. This engine was about was firing about 15 degrees after top dead center, or before top dead center, sorry. So let's roll this out to about 15, which we're going to call that little, you guys see that little bump right there? We're going to call that little bump right there, and then we're going to come out about 15 degrees, and we're going to call that bottom little valley right there. So let's move this overlay over just a little. Let's put it on the bump. Now this will represent more of where the piston is on actual top dead center physically versus the firing. See how that moves six over a little? It kind of gets it off the line. Now it's a, it, it really starts looking more like six without having to think about the exhaust valve opening. So let's put our overlay back up again. Uh, now we'll move the overlay over. And see right in here, see how six is more on the exhaust. Six cylinders can be a little more confusing because they fire every 120. And I've got a feeling, I haven't done a three yet, but a three cylinder is gonna fire, I think, every 240. And I got a feeling that they're gonna land in the middle also. I haven't done one, but I might uh, because the three cylinders are out there and we're actually having some problems with them. So, but I just wanted to, kind of put that out there but if you think about when the exhaust valve opens and that air rushes into the cylinder that's when you get that low pulse so a six cylinder is a little different four cylinders they four cylinders and eight cylinders they land right nice and neat no question six cylinders a little more tough so slide that overlay over figure out your timing look at the scan tool Slide that overlay a little bit over to where the ignition timing is. It'll give you a better representation of actual top dead center, and it will help you a little bit with six-cylinder engines. Um, and that's my advice for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, you guys have a good one, and I will see you on the next one.